Hi, my name is Paweł Spychalski and one of the questions that is asked to me on a quite regular basis is is Betaflight better than INAV or is INAV better than Betaflight or the different combinations of those, um, those problems. I decided well, well to check something, to check and to make a hopefully objective comparison of in today's episode, in today's video of three flight controller softwares because today I will try to compare how three softwares, Betaflight, INAV and the EMU flight, yes the EMU flight, were able to fly, to drive, to control a drone, a run, really completely absolutely random drone, five inch racing freestyle machine I had somewhere on my on my shelf, something I was not really using very often. I just flushed the thing with first the first flight controller software, then the second, then the third, with every, every, every one of those. I made absolutely no tunings. I tuned nothing. I just flushed, answered the questions in the configurator, like, do you want to apply the, the unified target? Yeah, I want to apply the unified target. Or in case of INAV, do you want to, is this an airplane or a drone? It's a drone, so apply me a, a drone settings. And that was more or less all. I changed nothing besides that, uh, that was not really required for the for the software to be able to control the drone. I changed no filters, I changed no PIDs, I changed no magical settings, somewhere I applied no community presets whatsoever, only answered the basic questions. The only thing I had, I, I changed, I changed. In case of INAV, I manually applied the one shot 125 uh, motor protocol, and that's all. And in case of all the all the softwares, I had to modify the mixer or the resources because the, the drone had scanned slightly of uh, motor mapping and I also set up the arming on one of the channels. That's all. So what's will hap what will happen now? Now I will show you three flight footages with a commentary without, however, telling you which flight controller you are seeing right now. So first we will see flight controller one with my commentary of how it feels in the air, then two, then three, and then we're gonna take a break because um, I decided to make it slightly more interesting and the results of the comparison will be given to you in a separate video. A separate video that will also go out together with this video. So uh, if you will see the, that video first, then go, please watch. The first one, and uh, when you will fin when you will be done watching all the three flight footages with my commentary, then you will be able to think for a minute, for a second, for a minute or a five, which one of those flight footages comes from which flight controller? Interesting, interesting enough. I think so. So now let's roll the tape and let's see how uh, better flight. Enough and emu flight, but not not in this order, or maybe, or maybe not, you will never know. Made through the test. So let's roll the tape. Flight controller number one. From the takeoff, everything is more or less smooth. There are no problems in the flight. Everything is nicely locked in tight and the filters definitely are doing their job very nice because on the normal flight, there are no oscillations felt behind the sticks and there are no oscillations also audible because I'm flying kind of relatively close to where I sit. So it's Great. The propos. This is this is one of the most interesting usually things about um, the flight controllers. The, the one that we use right now to measure the performance. The prop wash is slightly there. If you really try to it prop washes, but it's kind of gentle and there are no problems with the prop wash. It's, I know that if I would really want to tune it out, I would be able to tune it out. And I also know that the propellers I'm using right now are, well, let's say at least two generations old and they are not very famous for being 
PropWash friendly. So, flight controller number one flies, I would have to say, great. Flight controller number two. Here, um, straight from the takeoff, you can feel and you can hear that something is bloody wrong. You cannot see it on the camera, on the DVR footage right now, because DVR footage almost always takes a lot of stuff out, that something is vibrating, because no matter how high the throttle is, something is really getting through the filters and you hear something vibrating. It's not that it's very... it's making the flight very unpleasurable, if not considering the, the sound of it, although it's not... <laughs> You feel that although it's nicely locked in in the flight and really the, the, the quad is doing what you want it to be doing in the air, that sometimes when the vibrations, especially during the prop wash conditions, are make, getting slightly stronger, that it kind of wants to break free and do something unexpected in the air. And the prop wash, yes, the prop wash is there and the prop wash is really very strong and I'm really pretty sure if you look hard enough at the flight footage, you will be able to see the traces of the prop wash. It's really very, very, very visible, very much there. And I'm pretty sure if I would want to tune out the prop wash, I would have to spend a lot of time doing this. Because mm, something definitely is not right. And this drone, this quadcopter on this tune with this flight software definitely needs a lot of tuning, which I will not be doing now. And flight controller number three. It's nicely locked in. The quadcopter in the air does everything you want it to do without any problem. It's not trying to break free. It's not trying to make the flight worse than it really has to be. Um, so on those in those areas everything is fine. However, if I punch out, if I put a lot of throttle on the motors, I feel that something is not really great, that something is getting through the filters and really on the punch-outs, on the high throttle, something is audibly resonating. It's not very, very hard, it's not very strong, but it is over there and um, really makes you want to tune this thing out. Also, if we talk about the prop wash, the prop wash is, well, the prop wash is there. If you really want to, you can make this thing uh, prop wash during the titles. Although it's not very, it's not the worst prop wash ever. It's there, but I'm pretty sure that if I really wanted to, I could tune this thing out either by adjusting the filters or slightly raising the, the gain to really make the prop wash go away. So, if I would have to say three and a half, not great, not terrible, it has a potential, uh, but not working great out of the box. Those were the flight footages from three different flight controllers, Imuflight, INAV and Betaflight, and recorded on one of the evenings some time ago, with my commentary and now. Now, if you want to know which one was the best and which one was the worst, um, you have to watch another video. The video the link to the video is right now, at least should be right now somewhere there and definitely is in the description of the video. And if you have your own um, favorites and you think you know which one is the best, which one is the worst, you can compare this in just a few minutes. Probably this is not the last test like that, because I will also want to make a very similar test on the 7-inch and the 3-inch drones. And, uh, and yeah.
That's all. If you want to know the results, watch the next video.